Hey everyone, happy Thursday and welcome to Virtual Ventures Live. I'm Helene and we are sponsored by the Plant Based Network and thanks to them for that. Let's talk prizes before we get into anything. We have some new sponsors. One of them is Cineholic and they are sponsoring our lives this month. And who wouldn't want to win a gift certificate to Cineholic? Well, I guess if you don't live by them, that would be a tease. But if you do, you do have that opportunity to win a $50 gift certificate from Cineholic. How? By entering our contest. Just go to virtualvegfest.com and click the contest tab and enter. How do you enter? You do things like subscribing to Virtual Veg Fest YouTube. And it's a really big incentive this month because they made it so if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you get 25 entries and you don't have an opportunity, not just an opportunity to win a Cineholic gift card, but a prize pack from Follow Your Heart, Orgain, Crafters Organics, and Hodo Foods as well. And our newest sponsor, in addition to Cineholic, is Shroom Meats. So you have the opportunity to win a prize pack from them too. Six prizes over the course of the month. That means six winners just for doing things like subscribing to our social media. Simple, 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 simple. So please go and do that if you can. So today we're going to Veganuary and it's a better time to talk about this because Wendy's not crazy busy. <laughs> so she's got the time to talk to us about how she got involved with this, her time at Farm Sanctuary, I've helped out with a movie that in a short movie with Gene Bauer and Lalani. We just talked about that before we went live. That appeared like, like premiered, I should say, in Durham, North Carolina, and it was about the the East Coast of North Carolina is all about. And sadly, a, a lot of pigs are being slaughtered on the East Coast of North Carolina, second largest in the country for for that here. So they created this short film to, in the best word, highlight what's going on in this state. So I'm going to go, I think that's all I want to say. Remember, if you have questions or comments, to put them in the box and we'll definitely address them. And let's go grab Wendy. Hey. Hi, Helene. <laughs> really happy to be here. I'm happy you're here too, because this was kind of serendipitous. I joined Ron from Plant Based Network, was part of that Pittsburgh Vegan Society talk, Zoom talk and you were on the panel along with him and I popped in a little late and I kind of scanned the room and I was like, Oh, I know you. Oh, there's a, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I need to talk with you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how this happened. And it started, I mean, it was months ago now, but that's because I'm booked three months in advance for these like twice a week talks, but I would love for people to get to know you. You've got an amazing background in the vegan world for whom you've, you've worked with or worked for and the people you know. So please share anything that you want to share. Sure. Um, yeah. So like you said, I've been working in the animal protection space for, oh, a little over a decade now. And I started my career at Farm Sanctuary, which is, like you said, how you and I met um, when you brought out an amazing team of volunteers for the premiere of the short film we produced. And I worked in a lot of different positions for Farm Sanctuary. I spent some time in Los Angeles working in communications, and I spent some time in Watkins Glen actually working on the farm um, and spending time, you know, my office was in the, in the top of a barn and got to spend time with the rescued animals all the time. It was really beautiful. So I've been kind of in every place uh, with, with that organization and loved the work I did there. And as time went on, I found that I was just more and more interested in food as activism. Um, you know, the advocacy work and animal rescue work is so incredibly inspiring to me. And it's so inspiring to the people who are watching it happen too. And then they want to know, how can I go vegan, right? I understand why, but I'm not really sure where to start. And I found that I really enjoy and just had a knack for helping people make that transition and sharing recipes and tips. So... Veganuary was an organization I really started to admire from afar. Um, I think the work they do, they were doing in the UK to help people make the transition to vegan was incredible and kind of growing meteorically. And so when I heard that they wanted to come to the US, I knew that that was the role for me. And I applied and am now the US director for Veganuary. And that's fantastic. 
I mean, it's like, to me, that's one of the coolest jobs. And especially regarding food, big foodie, love to travel and try the new restaurants. And of course, one of like the tenets of everything that we do, right, is I call food, the vegan, vegan food at events, especially the gateway drug to, vis- to veganism. <laughs> exactly (laughs) it truly is because when people come to events it's food it's 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 the number one draw is what food will be there especially if you bring food from out of state and not Mm -hmm. stuff they can eat you know every day in the restaurants and even the restaurants that are there every day will bring something they don't normally make to the events so that makes it a draw as well but they do it's food shop Mm -hmm. food again (laughs) Final shopping. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. And I think there's that there's that convenience factor, right? Like people are so often just surrounded by amazing vegan food and they have no idea, you know, or their restaurants. I mean, Cineholic's a great example. I know you were mentioning them earlier on. They have these fantastic fully vegan cinnamon rolls. And, you know, there was one near me in Echo Park when I lived in LA. So I'm a, a huge fan. But I had friends who ate there all the time and had no idea it was vegan until right. I told them. And their, you know, their minds are blown. So I think just helping people see how convenient these options already are and, and how many of them are already available is so important. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like Copper Branch yeah, is another example of a kind of now more mainstream restaurant. They opened up in Nashville, so I'm really looking forward to eating there yeah. when we go to Nashville this year. But again you you know you don't know their their menu looks absolutely incredible you can pop in get some food and and probably leave going well that was delicious i was vegan (laughs) (laughs) it's an all vegan restaurant (laughs) Mm -hmm. so like yeah like cineholic too i mean they don't it's not in glaring red lights that everything's vegan it is it is there but the goal is to bring people and anyone's welcome to come in and eat something delicious. Exactly. Yeah. It's a great marketing strategy. Yeah. Cause it is, I mean, it's a cinnamon, it's a cinnamon roll that you can customize when we were on, I was on with Wendy last week, Cindy, not Wendy, Cindy last week and on Friday and they had someone contact them and say, do you know how many different combinations you can do with all your toppings on your cinnamon rolls? And the person was like, I figured it out. It's like over a million. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> over a million different combinations with all the toppings that they have that you can do for cinnamon roll. So for like, once again, don't wait to win the prize for the <laughs> monthly prize bag. <laughs> start, start at Cineholic today and, and work on those million different ways that you can eat a cinnamon roll. I love that someone <laughs> took the time to work out that probability. That's fantastic. I know. It's exactly the same. We're like, uh, no, we don't know. Oh, I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> that person loves statistics. And that's great because, you know, we need people who love statistics we in this do. world. It's not me. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that was like the math class to graduate college. <laughs> mm-hmm. You just get through it. Just get through it to get your degree. <laughs> So, so yeah, you know, that's like, that's the theory of change that, that we're operating under at Veganuary, essentially, is that if you can just open people's eyes to vegan options that are already kind of right there in front of them, then they're going to start to look at a restaurant menu a little bit differently. And they're going to start to look at a grocery store shelf a little bit differently and just realize that they can make these choices every day. Um, and, you know, it's, it feels so inaccessible and like such a high bar when it's not already integrated into your life. So a lot of what we do is just helping people see the things that they're already eating that are vegan or, you know, maybe a very simple swap that they can make. Right. And I think one of the best ways, one of the best things that's happened in regards to like going to the meat section in the supermarket, right? Because beyond an impossible and Smithfield Mm -hmm. and like, and light life, they've, they've all made that conscious decision of putting their products next to the animal products in the store. And, and I know like I just, we just had somebody here to like quote flooring. Right. And he, we got to talking, of course, like veganism came up and he was like, that refuge and like 
Piedmont. I was like, yeah, Piedmont Farm Animal Refuge. He's volunteered there. And of course, they, they, yes. they, they share a vegan message with people who volunteer. They're not. But he was like, but, you know, we've like, we have burgers and we've made the choice to buy the vegan burger over the that's animal great. based burger. And I was like, that's, that's, that's the reason those products exist. They're not for vegans. They're for omnivores who go yeah. to a restaurant and say, let's try this impossible thing. Right. And like, they try it and like it. And then they go to the supermarket and they go, isn't that what we had at that restaurant? And they go, yep, yeah. oh, I liked it. Let's buy it. And they're not even realizing they have no conscious. They're not thinking I'm saving the planet. I'm saving animals by this. They're just thinking that was good. And, and then you don't know where that's going to go when someone says like, well, you know, you can do this. And then you start looking at recipes and they all tend to lean towards yeah. vegan. And then you let seeds, the seeds are sprouting everywhere. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, some grocery stores like Kroger um, have had a lot of success by integrating the plant-based products, like you were saying, you know, into the meat section, into the dairy section. And there's, I wish I had it in front of me, but there's a great study Plant-Based Foods Association did with Kroger. Um, and they saw a major uptick in sales when they started putting those project products together, because it really is, like you said, it's the flexitarians making that different choice that are driving a huge, you know, increase in plant-based sales. So. Yeah, it's, it's great it's, to see more retailers doing that. Yeah, it's awesome. But the I, the part that I don't like is that I like to go to like one section yeah. and just buy everything <laughs> that I'm interested in. And now like if like a Target, you have to literally go through the whole store to find the things because everything's integrated. Dairy, you know, plant-based dairy is over here. Plant-based meats over here. Like everything, yeah. you know, everything is like within like all the shelves, and you're like, oh, can't they just have one section? You're right. Yeah. No, so, I mean it is right. It's a it's positives and negatives, but overall for the movement, it's probably a great thing. It just makes us take a little longer when we shop. Exactly. I'm I'm a fan. I'm definitely a fan of getting the products into more people's hands. And I, you know, that's a great segue for you to talk about how do you do that <laughs> with Veganuary? Yeah. So a big part of what we do is working with retailers, restaurants, and brands to launch and promote their vegan products. Um, in January, you know, is our, our biggest push of the year, but we also do that throughout the rest of the year. And we do it in a few different ways. Um, one is just by helping to connect them with an audience of veg curious folks, right? So we work to build an audience and um, encourage people to sign up for Veganuary so we can say we know that X amount of people will be going vegan in January. It's a great time to, to have a rollout of a plant-based product. Um, and we can help make sure you have that instant exposure to a new audience. And we also offer promotional materials and assets that they can use for marketing. Um, so essentially, Veganuary is a free marketing program or marketing hook that those businesses can use to shout about the great things they're doing in the plant-based space. That's really and cool. Thanks. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and you know, in the UK, um, we launched in 2014. So if you're to walk down Main Street in the UK in January, you'll see every major retailer advertising Veganuary specials. You'll see all of the chain restaurants, you know, Subway and Burger King advertising Veganuary specials. And it's really, it's really taken off in a major way there. And it's a household name. And we launched in the U.S. about two years ago. Um, and we're really picking up some momentum here. So we had an incredible amount of media exposure this year. And some bigger businesses taking on Veganuary, like Costco and Hellman's. Um, and I'm hoping in the next few years, you, know, you won't be able to walk down the street here without seeing Veganuary everywhere during January. Yeah, I know. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure whatsoever to you know make that happen but I mean I hope that happens because you know sometimes sometimes when someone wants to try something new it's overwhelming mm -hmm. you know because ten people tend to think on a longer term bigger terms as opposed to baby steps day by day like you yeah. have to teach people to do baby steps day by day to build up you know, a foundation to build up the consistency, to build up the habit of doing something. So to just say, you know, just a month, because that's yeah. what, that's all people need to realize that they do it for the month and then they go eat something that's not vegan and they feel sick and they go, hmm, 
I felt really good in January, <laughs> really good. And now I don't feel as good. What's the difference? Oh, I made a choice to, and whatever that is, if it's meatless Mondays in January, if it's the whole month being vegan, if it's, you know, lunches only, dinners only, breakfast, you know, whatever it is, whatever, whatever their steps are, every step is a positive, but absolutely, it builds that foundation, that movement, you know, it starts the snowball for the year. And of course, so many people in January do their, you know, what are those things called? Because I like, completely brain. New Year's resolution? Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, their resolutions. And so it kind of falls into, I mean, a lot of people go, I want to be healthier. Okay, well, and they start searching. Well, how can I be healthier in January? Because they're searching in December, you know? So, yeah. And they're like, well, you know, I heard this vegan thing. Vegan thing's supposed to be yeah. healthy. <laughs> right. And especially now that we're having a lot of different celebrities and influencers promote it, you know, there's creating a lot more buzz on social media um, and getting that exposure. So we're hoping people do think of Veganuary when they start thinking of their New Year's resolutions. That's cool. And who, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't think. No, please. Oh, who, what kind of influencers? Who have you had? Yeah. So the one I was most excited to work with this year was Tabitha Brown. Um, she starred in our campaign ad and, you know, she, she's just such a perfect voice for Veganuary because she's got this warm, welcoming presence, you know, I, she makes everyone feel welcome at the table and she makes veganism not feel, you know, as intimidating. And I think she's just perfect for it. Um, so she created a video with us with the theme that, you know, it doesn't have to be perfection. You just need to try your best, expect mistakes and keep going. So, um, yeah, I think the video should be on our Instagram, but she's just been an amazing voice for Veganuary. And we also have had um, Joaquin Phoenix as a supporter, Alicia Silverstone, uh, Alec Baldwin this year. So we've been really fortunate to have a lot of great celebrity support. And Mayim Bialik has been in our corner since the beginning, too. That's fantastic. So you do you actually get to interact and work with them? I do. Yeah, that's a really fun part of my job. That's fantastic. I may be, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit you up. <laughs> and there are some names there that I, I want to be in touch with. And I want, I want them to come on or there's something that I want to work with them on. So I, I'm, they expect that email after this. Okay, I'll look out for it. Because <laughs> that would be, I would be greatly appreciative. And one of them, I think you'll be totally aligned with because it's not for me. It's actually for another nonprofit that I'm trying to get, trying to get 20 to 30 seconds of Joaquin Phoenix's time. Mm. I don't even need, it actually doesn't even need to be, it just needs to be a recording on a phone and sent. That's it. It's all I need. And it's not for me. Yeah. It's, for, it's for somebody else. <laughs> so I just keep putting that out there into the world. And I want to make that happen because it would be, it would be super special for the Center for Contemporary Sciences for them to yeah. get that in support of them. So, you know, that's, it's part of like, you know, part of what I do is not always for like triangle veg fest or virtual veg fest. It's, it's actually helping others, other nonprofits, obviously other animals, whatever I can do to help out in the world. So if it crosses my path and I have the ability when I cross other people's paths for them to maybe help with some of these things that I don't, I can't do on my own, but I, we all work together and, you know, we can yeah. make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not surprised you've got your hands in everything, helping everybody out and you know, it's definitely getting touch offline. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. So, um, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to add, cause you were talking about, you know, these, this idea of something short term and non-judgmental and kind of just getting your foot in the door. Um, you know, I think we've seen a lot of great evidence that that leads to lasting change. So we just did our participant survey for a 2021 campaign. And we found that 85% of participants plan on permanently changing their diet after Veganuary. So that's either, going vegan completely, or I guess staying vegan, um, or at least having their intake of animal products. So even though it's a short-term campaign, we're seeing a lot of really long-term results. That's really cool. I mean, if, I'm assuming the results from the UK obviously are different from the results from the United States. So yeah, can you break yeah. that down more for like what happened here? Um, well, so the number I just gave you comes from our end of year 
survey. Um, and that is a global survey. So the numbers I have to share are global. Um, but I can tell you we had a, a really marked increase in signups in the U.S. this year. And U.S. is number two after U.K. at the moment. So um, we're also currently in Germany and Latin America. Okay. So all of our campaigns are growing. But at the moment, the U.S. is, is growing um, the second most quickly. So that's really exciting. Cool. You answered the question I was going to ask, like right after that, like what other countries are you in? <laughs> so that's, that's like pretty neat. So in Latin America. so Yeah, we have campaign managers in Brazil, Argentina, and Chile right now. Um, but we also have signups all across Latin America. So that's been a really strong campaign. And in addition to the countries where we have full-time staff, we also have partner organizations that run the campaign in France, Italy, Sweden, India, and I'm, I know I'm forgetting a few, um, but we've got a lot of support all around the world. Oh, that's neat. If, like, so if somebody was watching, because the people do watch them all over the world, right? Because yeah, it's, it's streaming on Plant-Based Network, and so it is global watching this video. So if somebody's in a country that you're not in, can, can they just write to you and be like, I want to do this in my country? Yeah, please reach out. We're always, um, we're always interested in talking to you know, potential volunteers around the world. And the best way to reach me directly would be to email usinfo at beganuary.com. Um, and I can kind of help push you into the right direction or put you in touch with the right person. All right, cool. For more info, I can put that as part of this so that people can, you know, see that when they get to this point, it's, it's part of the video. Yeah, that that's like, that's really neat because, you know, volunteers, I've, I feel like not a nonprofit can't exist without volunteers to it's help so it. Yeah, to help it move and, and spread the word and do as many things as you possibly to do more than you can. You you just do the funding and like everybody's stretched because you tend to work with a smaller staff and everyone has to do more. <laughs> yeah. Because, and, and and that's it that's the nature of an of a nonprofit organization. <laughs> yeah, we're so lucky to have a great network of volunteers and Right now, one of the things we offer to anyone who signs up for Veganuary is access to a private Facebook group where they can go to get questions answered and, you know, recipe info and support. Um, and we have about 10 volunteer moderators who just have dedicated their time to hanging out in there and kind of serving as, you know, vegan coaches. Um, and they're absolutely amazing. So we're really, really grateful to have some fantastic dedicated volunteers in our corner. Oh, that's a huge help. <laughs> like moderating a Facebook group. <laughs> that yeah. Just, like, saves, it saves you a lot of time to have somebody else in there that obviously can answer questions. Food questions are probably happen all time. You yeah. Know, or just people, you know, showing photos of a label and asking, can I eat this? Is this vegan? Because we do have a lot of real newbies in the group. And um, I think just having a place where they can get that question answered right away is, is so valuable. So let's go. I'm going to go in a direction that's con uh, controversial. Okay. And it's it, it, people can be like, "Why is it controversial?" But it is. It's controversial because I see it on Facebook in groups and comments all the time. Made in a facility that has eggs, wheat, dairy, shellfish, traces of dairy, fish, egg, wheat could be in the product i mean wheat's obviously not an issue but the shellfish the dairy egg obviously things that are not vegan now it's still vegan <laughs> in my <laughs> mind that it's it's on there for an allergy reason I, I find a lot of newbies and then some really strict people <laughs> I look at that and they go i'm not gonna eat that you probably can't yeah. eat you probably can't eat a processed food because unless it's a 100% dedicated vegan company and that's all they do and they have their own factory, that's probably the only way you can guarantee that there isn't cross-contamination with an animal product. But mm -hmm. it's only because, I mean, they clean the machinery in between uses. It's not that they don't do that. However, they're cleaning. So, right. so if you're that sensitive to shellfish and it's something that was made in a facility where shellfish is made, then you might not want to eat that product, not because of the vegan part, but because you could 
die. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm with you there. I think, of course, if you have allergy issues, you have to be really mindful of those labels. Um, I personally, you know, do eat things that are made in a facility where there could be cross-contamination. I think for me, it's important to move the needle, right? So I want brands who also create non-vegan products to see that there's a huge demand for vegan products and then have the incentive to expand that line. Um, at the same time, you know, I fully respect and appreciate anyone who would rather only support mission-driven brands and and not um, put their money towards brands that are using shared facilities. So it's a really a to each his own issue, but you know, from where I stand, I, I would consider those products vegan. Oh, it's, it's probably good. I didn't know, I didn't know your answer on that. You could have gone the other way, <laughs> but I mean, it's, 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 you know, uh, the, the, the main goal of the main goal is to get things purchased mm -hmm. and just, and you move, you move things with money. I mean, I hate yeah. that we live in a world where things get moved with money, but things get moved with money all the time. And the reason why Nestle and Smithfield and all those other companies are, are gobbling up, pun intended, the vegan companies is because they see the investment as being profitable to them. Yeah. And I'll borrow a line from Gene Bauer. He always says, you know, you really do vote with your dollar. Um, and I believe it. I think that it's, well, I mean, like you said, that's just what's, it's going to change the world is, is social entrepreneurship. So I'm yeah. Yeah. happy to see, you know, anyone making those choices at the grocery store, whether it's their entire cart full of vegan products or, or just a few, it really does speak and it really does influence the way that, you know, businesses develop new products. Right. Or, or, you know, purchase companies to, to, you know, to build even more. I mean, it, do I wish these, I mean, the whole, you see business-wise, I think what happens in the world is a lot of people don't understand business and mm -hmm. that you start a company, you don't, t you don't typically start a company to be like, I'm just going to like work this company for the rest of my life. Right. You know, when you have that big corporation come and offer you millions for what your, your, your blood, sweat and tears went into, you're like, then you have like then you have the ethics part but you also have the financial part because but how how far can you take this how much further can they yep exactly the distribution that you can get by working with you know, a major national corporation is massive and a lot of these mission driven brands that's why they get into it is they want to spread plant based to the masses so that's you know really ultimately the way to do that um, and what I've seen in the past too is that you know smaller vegan brands sell to a large national, and then that entrepreneur turns around and starts another vegan brand and grows it from the bottom up. So you know they have that entrepreneurial spirit; they're just going to keep going. And I think it's a, a net positive. Yeah, it's, it's true. Because I think there's I think there's something addicting about it, and I do believe like when you start something and you build it, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to start another thing. I'm going to build it, and people look at you and go. Do you ever sleep? And you're like, well, no, I, I do, but I, if I never work harder than when it's for me. Yeah, you know, when it's something that I'm passionate about and I love, the work is it's not work, and mm -hmm. and that's what I think everybody strives for in their lives is when they get up every day, that they don't go, oh, I gotta get up every, I gotta, I gotta go do that again. But you get up every day and go, all right, what's it going to be today? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what, what, and it's not always fun, but what are you going to like, what are you going to work on? What's going to grow? What's going to come across your path in that day? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm so lucky in that way that I've, I started into the nonprofit world right out of school. So my, my entire career has been in the nonprofit space and, you know, really focused on making an impact for animals. And I've always, been able to wake up in the morning excited about what I do and um, I know that's not the case for everyone so I'm very fortunate there and I'm seeing you know as I'm hiring different positions we do see a lot of folks from the corporate world or you know from different sectors moving into nonprofit because they're ready to do something more altruistic and you know not feeling as as drawn to the work they were doing previously so um, it's a really nice shift 
Yeah. And it's not, it's like not saying that it's not hard work and it's not saying that you won't, you know, have a lot of hours that you'll put into it, but your the end goal, the end game, right. Is, is to change the world in some form yeah. or manner. And you're very fortunate because you did it on the animal side, which is also environment. And you've done now doing it on the food side, which is all three, right? So mm -hmm. environment, animals, and you know health. So I mean that's that's it, to me that's I that's like awesome because it's so it sounds it just sounds like a really cool day to know like what kind of impact you can have on people's health and on the planet and obviously on the on the animals and the environment, all of that combined. And, yeah. and as you see those numbers, as you see the people sign up and as you see the support of them in January and then beyond. Yeah, it's really true. I mean, we had we had 580,000 people. Sign, yeah, over 580,000 people sign up for January this year. And, you know, the, I am so personally inspired by those numbers, because like you said, I've seen, you know, so much in this movement, um, you know, working directly with people who are doing animal rescue, you know, all I have to do is think back to some of the things I've seen in some of the horrific rescue cases to be, you know, continually inspired to encourage more people to eat plant-based. And then my degree when I was in school was a combined environmental studies and English major. So, um, you know, that's really where I, the wheels started turning for me about the environmental impact of animal agriculture. Um, so I have all of these different things in my past that really inspire me to, to keep pushing and to keep trying to create change in the future. So what about you? Let's talk more about you because we talked about Veganuary and Farm Sanctuary. I want people to know who you are and like what you're passionate about outside of this, like obviously incorporating this, but I also want to know more about you. <laughs> so what, what makes you happy? What do you, what do you do on like a, a daily or like when, you know, there's no COVID out there and <laughs> you've lived in multiple, you've lived in LA, you're now in Virginia, you know, I mean, different, it's your, it's different worlds from LA to Virginia, but you know, Richmond is amazing when you go visit yeah. Richmond, incredible vegan restaurants in Richmond, plus that Monument Way. Have you gone down Monument Way in Richmond? Yeah, yes, <laughs> recently. So I, it's incredible. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's like, it's like, what is this doing here? <laughs> I mean, it really is. If you don't know what we're talking about in Richmond, Virginia, there's a street called Monument Way. And there's literally monuments like the coolest it's like the coolest street because like every like intersection there's this big monument with like you you let the circle that you go around but it now, so right now um a lot of the monuments are confederate soldiers and there was just a, a big movement to try to remove some of them um, but if you drive down monument way now they're all you know covered over and painted with blm messaging it's it's really really cool to see that's even i haven't been i was even been in a while to Richmond because you know, COVID, but yeah. that is fantastic yeah, and important. So I'm, I'm really glad to Absolutely. hear that because the concept is still there of like this monument way. And hopefully the, you know, Richmond, the city of, or the state of Virginia will update those to be more humane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah. To answer your question. I mean, I'm a, I am interested in so many things. I'm a I'm an enthusiast, right? So I've always got some sort of passion I'm I'm chasing down. Um, right now, I'm really interested in Ayurveda, and I'm taking a course to become an Ayurvedic counselor. Um, I don't think it's something I'll do as a career. It's more just a personal interest, but it's a it's an Indian form of medicine, and you know, really focused on kind of intuition and, and herbalism. And it's something I've been skirting around the edges of for a while that um, I'm kind of digging deeper into now. So I have some extra time in COVID and I've been taking a course in that. And you're going to laugh at this um, because I've turned myself into the most stereotypical vegan, but I just started doing CrossFit. <laughs> 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 now my joke is I'm the most annoying person in the room, right? Because I'm vegan and a CrossFitter. Um, but it was, you know, I was someone who typically would, would be more into like a yoga or a Pilates class. 
Um, but when COVID happened, all of those spaces all of a sudden didn't feel quite as, as safe. Um, but the CrossFit gym where I live in Charlottesville is huge and it's like mostly outdoors. So it just, I just gravitated towards it because it was kind of a safe place to work out. And I, I love it. So hopefully I'll have some muscles soon and I can make the case that I'm getting enough protein. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's, that's fantastic. This, you know, for the last year, it's been over a year now. I I started, I, I, I said, I can't waste this year and, and I have to get healthy with it. Cause I'm not traveling, you know, not doing the events. I have all this extra time. So let's do something positive with it. So I started exercising and started new, dropped 30 pounds, you know, just, nice. yeah. So it's been, it's, it's a, it's part of my life now. I bought a treadmill. It's every day. That's great. So I get it. I'm talking about starting foundations and creating habits. Yeah. You know, you can do it with food. You can do it with exercise. You can do it with your health. I mean, it, it's all encapsulated together. And it's it's important because everyone kind of needs to be exercising every yeah, day. And, <laughs> you know, at least for me, um, at the beginning of COVID, the first – you know, eight or nine months or so, I think my exercise definitely went down because public spaces weren't open. Um, I started working from home and I used to bike or walk, you know, to an office space. So that kind of took away some physical activity. And yeah, I just kind of started to feel sluggish and not my best. So only in the last couple of months, I've gotten back to it. But I don't want anyone to feel bad who's gotten like into bad habits in COVID because I think a lot of us have. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's more prevalent than the than the opposite of well, I'm gonna this is what I'm gonna do with this time. I want everyone to stop, reflect, and realize no matter how busy you are, you can you can put time in your day for you. Yeah. That I, I, I don't I don't care what somebody says. I'm so busy, my work this, this, that, children. I get it. I get everyone has busy lives, but in those busy lives, because you only have one life to live put time mm. in every day for yourself. Absolutely. It is it is mentally and physically healthy for you to do that and and don't let anyone tell you that you shouldn't because you are worth it. And the kind of thing comes down to is you are worth it and worthy of time for yourself. And I'm not saying you have to take 5 hours to yourself every day because <laughs> that's probably not realistic. And some days that is what you need to do. Like a Sunday yeah. and stay in bed for 5 hours the whole day. That's okay. <laughs> Just don't do that every day. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that came up a lot this year um, because we, we were worried about how things would go, right? Because there's so much happening in the world right now. It was such a chaotic year. And are people going to want to make changes in January? Or, like, do people just need the comfort of normalcy right now? And, and we weren't quite sure how people were going to react to the January. Um, so it's really you know, positive and inspiring to see so many people sign up this year. Um, and, you know, there were the occasional journalists who joked, like, I need my stake more now than ever. And, you know, why would you put yourself through something like January during COVID? But I think what you were just saying, like, people need that self-care now more than ever. People need to, to find new ways to feel energetic and hopeful. And, and hopefully that's something that we can give them. Yeah, one thing that was really highlighted with COVID was the fact that the environment is being killed by humans. Yeah. You know? I mean, it was glaring when we all went and stayed in our homes that the animals came out of hiding and the sky cleared yeah. up. You know, I mean, that says a lot. So let's not forget that. Yeah. And learn absolutely. those lessons so that we can... we. The focus on saving this planet is incredibly important. And an easy way to do that is to change the food that you put into your body. It's this, like the Absolutely. simplest way to do that, you know, because, you know, you might not be able to change your car. You might not be able to, you know, do things that impact the environment, you know, that stuff you might have to do. But you, your choice to what you put on your plate and how you fuel, fuel your body can save the planet and you and every yeah. person had can have an impact i mean that's some people just you know a lot of people say like oh i, I can't you know i'm just one person well i i say go look at the starfish story right the little girl exactly. with the starfish and grandpa or how it's many different ways that it's been said and shown but 
a human, one person can impact, have an impact on this planet, on other people, on the world, and especially on the animals. Just go get the, what is the vegan calculator thing? How much water, how many animals you save just by eating like one vegan meal or the number of years you've been vegan, how much, you know, how much impact you've had on the planet. They're all over the place. Those are real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard to think of a reason not to do it, right? It's, it's a positive impact on the planet. It's got a positive impact on animals. And even if the only reason you want to do it is to feel better. I mean, we had, I, let me see if I can find the numbers. So 49% of people said that they had a better mood when they were eating vegan. Um, 46% saw their skin improve and we had 38% saw a desired change in body weight, whether that was gaining or losing, depending on, you know, what their goals were. But, um, you know, it's, you just, you just feel better eating plant-based and, you know, physically, which is a reason enough to make the change, but then you get kind of the more, um, you know, psychological benefit of knowing that you're making a positive impact or, right. or not contributing to the detriment of the planet. Right, exactly. And then you watch then you watch a documentary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you like you turn on Netflix and you're like, Oh, let's watch, you know, you know, Seaspiracy. I haven't watched it yet, or like what the health yeah. or you know, Forks Over Knives is my go to for people because there's there's no gore or anything in it. It's just all it's all science fact based. And yeah. it's it's hard to argue with that movie. <laughs> it's like there's no yeah. arguing, it's all science. So it's it. If you come out, if you watch the movie seriously and you come out on the other side going, give me cheese, I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, the other one that came out, uh, Game Changers. Game that Changers. one seems to be really impactful. Yep. And I've heard people talking about that a ton. Um, yeah. Documentary. I mean, filmmaking is, is just so, so powerful. You know, I have friends that I've talked to about going vegan for years and it was like, you know, they, they never heard anything I said, but then they stumbled upon a Netflix documentary and they're completely changing the way they eat. So uh, I think to be a, you know, a brilliant filmmaker is, is really a way to, to change people's minds. And it's amazing that some of these are doing so well on Netflix. I know. And it's funny, like those friends who suddenly like go vegan after watching like one of them and you're in the background going, but I've been telling yeah. you. And you can't you so. and, you, and, you, and you don't. Cause you're just so happy and now you're like that source of information for them. Cause now the, all those questions are going to start coming. Yeah. It's vegan. It's just, what about this thing? Can I eat this? Can I, and you're like can, recipes. I need recipes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever it takes. Right. <laughs> yep. And that's what you, that's what you do. You're like, I created a recipe page on Facebook because I wanted a place to drop recipes before Facebook had, you could save stuff. Like in the mm-hmm. middle of the night, I was like, well, I've, I've, I need to save these somewhere. And I just created a group and still the group is still going. And That's it awesome. Just, it's all recipes, no drama, no, <laughs> like not, <laughs> nothing but recipes. No, I don't even, I don't promote what I do in there. No one's allowed to promote. It is all food, all recipes, all the time. And if you, I love that. Yep. And that, and I post a lot of things in there because I find stuff and I'm like, I want, and I want to make these things. I don't have the time to make all of them. Like this week alone, I put in a macaroon recipe. Yeah. Is and that an aquafaba based? It's macaroon? not. It's like, mm. I like simple recipes. So I don't, <laughs> it's, it's a very, very simple recipe. And it's, I, I, I think the only thing I may or may not have is full fat coconut milk. Yeah. It goes in there. Yeah. So there's, I, there's it's during the group. <laughs> like, when I do cooking demos on here, it always influences dinner. <laughs> I'm like, oh, would you make? Oh, would you make? I'm going to go make that now or some version of it <laughs> because I, dinner comes after this. So <laughs> yeah, I've been editing um, some of the recipes on veganuary.com right now. So we've got hundreds and hundreds of recipes, but because we started out in the UK, some of them are metric measurements. Mm-hmm. So I, I've been going through with the, the help of an assistant to turn them into standard measurements. Um, but spending a lot of time looking at recipes is hard because yeah, I'm always, always hungry during the day. Um, <laughs> when you go and you go food shopping, you're like, what did I need? Like, and also yeah. like you, like you suddenly you're like, where's, there's no savory food. <laughs> yep. I'm, and- I'm, it's like all, all dessert in this cart. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then I don't know if you feel this, but 
um, because we're you know always working with brands and, and researching brands that we want to work with, I feel this like obligation <laughs> to try the new vegan products. Okay. So if I see something new, I'm like, oh well, I better buy this. <laughs> It's true because then you, that you because it one it can open up the relationship with that brand mm-hmm. when you've actually tried it because it's like I always I'll buy it and then I'll write and be like well you know <laughs> here's <laughs> here's what I do over here and depending on the size of of the company because the real small ones will be probably jump on top of that the ones that are medium to larger they're kind of like yeah. <laughs> but thanks for buying our product. <laughs> so. yeah, and I always like to try things that we recommend on our website too. Yeah. You know, you don't want to send anybody to, or you don't want to scare anyone off of veganism with something that you haven't personally vetted. So what do you do is I, I'm going to we'll do this and then we'll close up. What do you do when you've got a product that you start promoting and then you try and go, this is awful. Do you leave it up? No, I mean, I'm. What do you do? Yeah, you know that that really hasn't happened too much um, that I can think of because most of the products we promote we promote because they're somewhat widely available, right? So, right. Um, for example, we're doing Chicken Week next week, uh, starting the 26th, where we're going to be talking about chicken alternatives. And so, I've been building out a list of here are all the different chicken alternatives that you can find if you're a U.S. shopper. Um, but most of the brands on there are things like Gardein and Sweet Earth and Morningstar because they're available everywhere. Um, and so because they're so widely available, they're ones that I've been eating for years and I kind of know. Right. Um, and I probably wouldn't list a brand I hadn't tried yet. So yeah, I've never had to go through and kind of like secretly sweep something under the rug. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's tried and tested before we post about it. <laughs> Yeah, you can also, you can try nugs. I, I'm gluten-free, so I, I haven't ever tried yet. them. But that would be, I've heard some people, some people are buying them by the case. Awesome. I did put them on the list, actually. So that's one I haven't tried that's on the list, but I've seen so many positive reviews. I figured it was safe. Um, right. But yeah, those are those are mail order only still, or can you find those in retail? I think they're mail order only still. So there you have, yeah, you see that's your Yeah, I was going to say one more thing I have to order. <laughs> you have to order it and then like just go live eating it. Well, try it first. <laughs> then go live eating it if you like it. <laughs> because it's yeah. nothing more awkward than trying something live and be like, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually going to do, um, as part of Chicken Week, there's an influencer named Courtney Grant who is going to do a chicken, a vegan chicken uh, taste test for us. So he's going to try a few different types of nuggets and kind of give his reviews on our Instagram. So uh, I don't have that scheduled yet, but we'll advertise it whenever we do. And that oh, that's be awesome. A lot of fun. <laughs> that, is, that is actually really cool. And uh, people, you know, people really appreciate that because even though everyone's got different taste buds and you know, different thoughts and feelings about everything, in general, if somebody else likes something, You'll probably yeah, like and it's it just too. fun. It's just fun to watch someone kind of try some different things. So yeah, then you've got the Maywa stuff too out of New York City. It, yes, the the chicken wings. You know, it's Maywa, and there's like another company I can't remember, Veggie something yeah. that does. And they too. have the sugar cane bone. Oh yeah, those are really good. Yep, you got. I got to remember well. to put those on the list. Yeah, that's like where I know some people feel like it's just too realistic. Yeah, like it's uncomfortable to like eat it because the because it's on a, it's on a bone in a sense, but it's delicious. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, I love those. You know, I mean, and go ahead. I was just gonna say, you you know, people ask that question sometimes, right? When I'm like, oh, this tastes just like bacon, or this tastes just like chicken, and and a lot of people roll their eyes and say, like, why do you want it to taste like bacon if you're vegan? And my answer is just, I didn't stop eating bacon because it doesn't taste good. It was delicious. I, I stopped eating bacon because I don't agree with it ethically. And, you know, I don't like the impact it has on the planet. So I'm perfectly happy with some, you know, analogs that pretty closely mimic meat. But I know not everyone is. Like a, a really rare vegan burger sometimes will be a little too much for me. But other than that, I <laughs> <laughs> and it's not really rare because there's right there's 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 no level of of death in that burger because <laughs> that's what i mean that's you know the, the it's raw meat to really well done meat the vegan burger is just 
product cooked, you know, to, right. to the correct temperature, which is what right. you need it to be so that you don't get any, you know, still salmonella or any issues in that sense, just the correct temperature. So it's really funny to call it like a, a really rare vegan burger. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to go, how, how, how does that work? Right. It, you, don't, you, <laughs> don't, you don't cook it all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess the word is just undercooked. Right. <laughs> it's it's really funny because some people will be like, can, "Can you can you make my vegan burger rare, please?" <laughs> <laughs> I'll cook it less. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> it's, it makes no difference. It's cold in the middle, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So, Wendy, thank you so much for joining me I see how quickly like the time goes Is yeah it... flew by <laughs> so I, I really appreciate you if people want to get in touch with you or like donate to veganuary or volunteer anything how would they do that because i know the website i can put that yeah so the website is veganuary.com um if you go to our homepage, it should navigate you to the u.s version right away based on your location so you'll find all of the relevant info there um, you can email me anytime at usinfo at veganuary.com. And I think that's all there is to know other than uh, following us on social media is a great way just to know what's going on at Veganuary. So we're, uh, we are Veganuary on Instagram and just Veganuary on TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Veganuary. I know that because I tagged you. When I did this. All right. That would be everything. I'm just going to get them up onto the screen. So they're all there. That's awesome. Yeah, um, so I hope you hear good. from a lot of people. And one one piece okay. that I wanted to say like a while ago and I forgot and it's come back now is over over half a million people signed up. Mm -hmm. each, each one of those, each one of those people most likely has at least one person that they're involved with who was also impacted. So you could legitimately say you touched at least a million people. Yeah, we actually did a study in the UK a couple of years ago, um, trying to find out how many people did Veganuary but didn't actually register with us. It's kind of taken on a life of its own, right? It's almost like Movember, um, where a lot of people do it, but they don't realize there's a nonprofit behind it. So Kantar did this study for us and they found that it was about 10 times the amount of people that sign up actually go vegan during January. Um, yeah, so it's got it's got quite a reach. And, you know, we haven't done a similar study in the US yet. But I just anecdotally and based on the amount we're mentioned on social and in the media, I would say that, you know, it's probably fairly similar numbers. Yeah, because I mean, most people either have a partner, a family, Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the mom says, guess what we're doing in January? Because mom cooks or dad cooks yeah. and go either way. I don't want to be sexist. It could be either one says, well, I'm cooking. Guess what? January is this now. And, yeah. you know, what you do outside this house. Well, that's what you do. But in this house, we're going vegan for this month because I signed up for this thing. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's this vegan, vegan, something. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and that's what we're going to do. And. It, that's uh, that's amazing to me because yeah. it's the reach. The, the there's reach a and... show. There's a show on Hulu now called Breeders, mm -hmm. and the latest episode, at, part of the plot was that the son decides to do Veganuary, and he kind of ropes his mom into it, and um, and the grandparents are confused, and no one can pronounce it. <laughs> but it was really just fun to kind of see it, you know, in pop culture in that way. That's so cool. It's funny that I brought up like that. How do you yeah. say that? <laughs> I don't, because it because sometimes people might not even equate it to vegan because they're just like, oh, this is unplanned January. <laughs> 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 but thank thank you so much. I really appreciate. It. I'm so glad to actually talk with you because as much as we've crossed paths for years, we've crossed paths. Yeah. We've never spoken for this long. I know. This is so <laughs> nice. This is a lot of fun. Thanks I've, so much for inviting me on. Oh, you're welcome. Very, very welcome. So have a great, have a great night. You too. Right. Thanks, thanks. Thanks. No problem. So everyone, thank you once again for joining Virtual Veg Fest Live. Really appreciate that you're here. Remember to go and sign up for our contest at virtualvegfest.com. And on Saturday, we are back with Diane 
Diana L. Edelman, and she is Vegas Baby, and I'm excited to talk with her because, one, I love Vegas. No, she's Vegan's Baby, not Vegas Baby. I, she's in Vegas, so she's Vegan's Baby, and it's gonna be, there's going to be a big food conversation happening on Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern because huge fan of Vegas, and I think I've said this before, you can go to Vegas and not gamble a penny and and be busy the whole time and be healthy too because outside of eating all the delicious food that's there there's hiking there's the, walking the strip alone you can walk miles every single day just go when it's not 110 degrees <laughs> so other than that please wear your mask just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean that you shouldn't wear your mask because so wear your mask over your nose under your chin uh, we support getting vaccinated here at virtual veg fest triangle veg fest we want to get things back to somewhat normal and one of the ways to do that is for everyone to get vaccinated we will have three in-person events this year and they are opening up to vendors this week into early next week so if you're a vendor and you want to be at a vegan event in nashville tennessee greenville south carolina or what's my other one greenville nashville Oops, there goes my brain for some reason. It's completely lost. But I should know. Greenville, Nashville, and Asheville, North Carolina. That's it. So three different states, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Tennessee this year. August and October for those events. Join us as an attendee and sign up as a vendor. If you want to do that, easy thing to do. Just write to us at vegfestexpos at gmail.com. And we will get you signed up as a vendor for those events. We'll get you the information. Other than that, we'll see you on Saturday at 4 o'clock. And have a great rest of your Thursday. Thanks. Bye.